Well, buckle up and here we go. We've got limits as x approaches infinity. And this is how we find horizontal asymptotes. So we've got three rules tonight. Remember to pause, rewind, and do what you need to do to make sure we have these down. All right, we're going to try to draw some separate pictures here. So number one, the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity. All right, so what is that saying? As your x values get larger, as your x values get bigger, your y values are going towards positive infinity. So can you picture what that looks like? As you go out this way, your y values are going up. So I would say maybe that's something like this. As x goes out towards infinity, the y values are going up. Uh, let's say the limit as x approaches um, negative infinity of f of x equals infinity. Okay, so same idea this time. As your x values head towards negative infinity, your y values, your intended height, is going up. So as I approach this way, my y values are going up. All right, so so far, easy, hopefully. All right, now picture this one. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals 4. Okay, so as you approach infinity on the x-axis, as you walk this way, your height is stopping, it's getting close to, it's intending to reach a height of 4. So as I approach infinity, as I come out, I'm only ever reaching a height of 4. So what that's implying is that you have created a horizontal asymptote at y equals 4. Because you're not going above it, you're not going below it, you are intending to reach that height of 4. You are approaching it. So my point is, is that when you see as x approaches infinity, you've got to get in your head that that's going to create a horizontal asymptote. Let me throw one more quick example. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals, let's say, negative 2. Okay, so same idea. As I walk towards negative infinity on the x-axis, as x approaches, the x-axis approaches negative infinity, as you come out this way, you can only get to a height of negative 2. Okay, so as I, you know, I have no idea what this graph is doing, but as I go out further, I can only reach this height of negative 2, which again is telling me I have created a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 2. So the point of the day is that when x approaches infinity, you've created horizontal asymptotes. So naturally, this begs the question on how do you find horizontal asymptotes? And it's real simple. We're going to use what we call the power fight. So there are three rules to the power fight. The first one is small over large, and that's going to get us an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Large over small will get us a horizontal asymptote that does not exist. Therefore, we won't really have a horizontal asymptote. Now, in the AP lingo, they're going to either imply that means positive or negative infinity, and I'll get into that in a moment. Or we're going to have what we call same over same, and in this case, you take the ratio of the coefficients. Now, what are we comparing? Don't forget... We're comparing the largest power in the numerator and denominator. Let's run through a bunch of examples. All right, number one, the limit as x approaches infinity, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3 over negative x squared plus 4x. Okay, now the only reason I'm doing power fight is because it's the limit as x approaches infinity. That is what's telling me I can use power fight. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it, actually, and I'm going to rewrite it with one term on the top and bottom. Who is the biggest power on top? Okay, I would definitely say it's this x cubed term. These guys are going to mean nothing to me. So let's rewrite the x cubed. Who is the biggest power on the bottom? Well, I would say that's the x squared term. So this guy's out, and it, notice it's negative x squared. Okay, now you follow your rules. Who's larger, the top, the bottom, or are they the same? Well, I would say I have the larger one on top, so I'm saying that's large over small. And according to my power fight, large over small is does not exist. Okay, so this limit as x approaches infinity does not exist. Now, the AP is going to want you to go a little further. Okay, here's what the AP says. 
they don't like does not exist for an answer. They typically will give you positive infinity or negative infinity, and you've got to determine which one it is. So when you get a does not exist, you're simply now going to take infinity and substitute it in. So I'm going to say this is infinity cubed over negative infinity squared. Okay, And all we care about is whether we get a positive or a negative at this point. So if I cube infinity, that's definitely a positive. And if I square infinity and then make it negative, that is a negative. So the answer I'm actually looking for is negative infinity. Okay, now again, this does not exist answer was 100% right. We're just not going to see that on the AP. They're going to either use positive or negative infinity for does not exist, because like we've said before, infinity is not an actual number. It does not really exist. So we're going to practice a lot of these. Stick with me, and let's try a few more. Number two. Uh, it's very similar to the last problem we did, except it's approaching negative infinity. So I'm going to do my power fight. I'm looking for that biggest term on top, and I'm rewriting it. So that's x cubed all over the biggest term on the bottom, negative x squared. So I'm saying to myself, what do I have? The larger one is on top, the smaller one's on the bottom. So I've got large over small, which is does not exist. Now again, if that's an answer choice and one of our five choices, grab it. Typically it's not on the AP. They usually say either positive infinity or negative infinity. So at this point, I just have to determine which one it is. And all you're going to do is plug in your negative infinity. So I'm going to take negative infinity cubed divided by negative, negative infinity squared, and ask myself, what type of infinity do I get? Well, if I cube a negative infinity, that's a negative, and if I square a negative, that's a positive, but now I'm multiplying it by a negative, which is a negative, and a negative divided by a negative would be a positive infinity, or, I mean, they're not going to put the plus sign there, just infinity for my answer. Let's keep chugging. All right, so three, I've got the limit as x approaches three of four x squared minus three x over two minus five x cubed. All right, so we'll take our time. We'll pull out the biggest term on the top and biggest term on the bottom. So I'm gonna say that x squared's biggest, so I'm gonna say that's four x squared, and the cube's biggest over negative five x cubed. Okay, now apply your power fight, and again, that's because x approaches infinity. I'm saying this one's larger on the bottom, so I've got a small over large. And this is by far my favorite answer because small over large is zero, and you can't screw up zero. So a nice, quick, easy answer. Number four. All right, so same idea. Let's pull out the biggest term on top, the biggest term on the bottom. So on top, it's that x to the fourth term, 3x to the fourth. Remember, the order could be different, so just look. On the bottom, I'm going to go with the x to the fourth term again, negative 2x to the fourth. Okay. Now, at this point, I have same over same, they're both x to the fourth is, so the rule is ratio of the coefficients. So I'm suggesting that my answer is 3 over negative 2. Okay, the coefficient here is 3, and the coefficient here is negative 2. Now, I still need to take my time and double check my signs. Okay, if I plug a negative infinity in, okay, so I'm plugging negative infinity in here, if I raise negative infinity to the fourth, I get a positive. That's a positive 3. And if I raise it to the fourth down here, I get a positive, and times that negative is a negative. So my answer, I'm verifying, should be a negative 3 halves. And this is the trickiest part, guys. Make sure you plug that in to determine if you have the correct sign. Watch the next one, how sneaky it is. All right, so again, I'm looking for that biggest term on top and biggest term on the bottom. So the bottom I'm going to start with, because I think that's more obvious, I would say the biggest term is the term of the x, so I'm going to say 3x. Now on top, forget the radicals even there. I've got an x squared and a 5. Clearly the x squared's bigger. But now put that in back in. So I've got the square root of x squared, which of course just turns into what? I would say that's x over 3x. So I'm saying ratio of the coefficients, the ratio in, or the coefficient in front of that x is 1. My gut's kind of telling me one third. <coughs> Excuse me. But slow down and check the signs. Here's like where I said it gets sneaky. I need to take this negative infinity and substitute it in. When I substitute it in here, I square it, which makes it positive, which is telling me I'm going to get a positive. But when I plug it in down here, I'm going to get a negative. So this is implying that my answer should be a negative one-third. All right, if that's something you've got to go back and pause and make sure you can get correctly, we might need to do that. 
All right, so again, I'm plugging it in to verify my signs. Just because I got positive one-third here doesn't mean my answer is actually positive. Okay, be real careful plugging in this negative infinity. All right, very similar. Uh, oopsie. Largest term on the bottom is my 3x. Largest term on top is the square root of x squared. Okay, which I know is going to simplify to x over 3x. So again, my gut's telling me to grab that ratio of the coefficients and pull out a one-third. Okay, but remember, you've got to slow down and check the sign. Plug in positive infinity and see what your signs are. Positive infinity squared is positive. Three times a positive infinity is a positive. So in fact, my answer is a positive one-third. All right, the next one's even uglier. The limit as x approaches infinity of 4x to the 4 sevenths plus the square root of x over 6x to the 1 third minus x to the 3 fourths. All right, so I gotta do a power fight again because I see the limit as x approaches infinity. So now I just gotta figure out who's bigger. Well, I'm gonna start on the bottom. A third or 3 fourths? Um, and I mean, I think we can all picture fractions in our head. If I broke this up into 1 third or I said 3 fourths, Okay, I would think we all know 3 fourths is bigger, so negative x to the 3 fourths. Um, now, this term here, I'm going to rewrite as x to the what power, hopefully. Hopefully, you're all saying x to the 1 half. Oops, x to the 1 half there. Um, so, obviously, a half and 4 sevenths. Well, 4 out of 7, is that bigger than a half or smaller than a half? Clearly, that's bigger than a half. So, 4x to the 4 sevenths. All right. So now I've got to compare 4 sevenths to 3 fourths. Who's larger in that case? And again, hopefully you're using some common sense. If you can't think fractions in your head, obviously get a common denominator and compare them. Um, but hopefully you're saying we have the larger term on the bottom, smaller term on top, and that's our favorite because that answer, small over large, is always zero. All right, so I think you've got the hang of it, I hope. Let's pull out that largest on the top and bottom. I'm going to go negative x to the fifth on the bottom, negative 4x to the fifth. Uh, I'm thinking ratio of the coefficients, same over same. So my coefficient on top, of course, is negative 1, and on the bottom, negative 4, giving me a positive 1 fourth. Now let me slow down and just check my signs. When I plug in this positive infinity, what sign am I going to get on top? Well, positive infinity squared times a negative is going to get me a negative. Divided by positive infinity to the fifth is positive times a negative, and a negative over a negative should be a positive. Just verify that you get the right answer with those signs. Now here's a creative one. Uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x divided by x squared minus 7. Well, you don't really have much options on top here. You've got the term sine of x all over largest term is x squared. Now, I'm going to substitute an infinity. I'm going to say it's the sine of infinity over infinity squared. Now, think about this. Infinity squared, obviously, is a very large number. How about the sine of infinity? All right, let's take a look at that sine graph. No matter what I plug in, the highest value I can get for sine is 1, and the lowest value I can get for sine is negative 1. Okay? No matter where I am, my answer's got to fall between a height of positive 1 and a height of negative 1. So anybody between there is extremely small, and 1 and negative 1 itself are small. So you're comparing a number between negative 1 and 1 over infinity squared. Who's larger? Definitely the bottom. So I would say that's small over large, which is our favorite answer of zero. And you don't have to check signs when you get zero because it's zero. There's no positive or negative zero. Now 10, um, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I've got to slow down and figure this one out because I don't know what my largest term is at the moment. I would actually have to multiply all these out. So like I said, I've got to slow down and figure out what I even have on top here. Uh, if I FOIL these out, what does that get me? x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. So I know my largest term is x cubed, but notice I didn't know that till I FOILed that out. I've got to do the same on the bottom. And, you know, you're welcome to multiply any way you want. I like to FOIL first, and then I multiply that x through. 
So I'm going to FOIL this out. So I'm going to get 12x minus 3x squared minus 8 plus 2x. Oops. And then I'm going to distribute that x through. And what's that going to get me if I clean that up? Negative 3x cubed uh, plus 14x squared, I think. Hopefully you're checking my math. Minus 8x. And now that I have it foiled, my largest term on the bottom is here, and I'm going ratio of the coefficients, so my gut is screaming at me 1 over negative 3. Now, I'm not 100% until I check the signs. Remember, if you don't get 0 as an answer, you got to check the signs. So if you take negative infinity and cube it, you get a negative. If you take negative infinity and cube it again here, you get a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So that tells me I should get a negative answer, so I do like my negative one-third. All right, you've got 11 and 12 on your own. Pause it, and then uh, play it back real quickly and see if we get the same answer. But pause it, try it on your own. So, again, quickly check your work. I've got mine written down. I can talk through it real quickly. I've got my pieces pulled out. I said that's large over small, which is does not exist, but the AP is going to either prefer positive or negative infinity. So I took two seconds and I plugged in infinity. On top, I got a negative. On the bottom, I got a positive. Therefore, my final answer is negative infinity. 12, I did the same thing, pulled it out. My large over small, which is does not exist, had to determine if it was positive or negative infinity. Quickly plugged in negative infinity. Negative infinity to the fourth is a positive times a negative is a negative. Negative infinity cubed times 4 is a negative, so I went with a positive infinity. All right, I've got two last goofy ones for us. Now, I've got the cosine of 1 over x. Now, at this point, I don't have a fraction, so I want you to take note that there is no power fight here. Okay, I don't have some mega, mega fraction. So all I'm going to use is what we said before, direct substitution. I'm going to say this is the cosine of 1 over infinity. Okay, now think about this. What is 1 divided by a really, really large number? Okay, and if you ever get stuck, I always think of it as like a pizza. Obviously, you can take half a pizza and you know what that looks like. If I took a fourth of the pizza, so that was 1 half. If I took 1 fourth of a pizza, did that piece get bigger or smaller? Well, definitely smaller. If I took, whoops, 1 eighth of a pizza, did that get bigger or smaller? So as this number on the bottom gets bigger, your slice of the pizza, so to speak, gets actually smaller. Okay, so as the number on the bottom gets bigger, you get smaller. So you are approaching what we'll call zero. If I asked you to take one one millionth of a piece of pizza, you would have almost nothing. So I would say this is really like the cosine of zero. And my answer, of course, is then one. Again, I'm just picturing the cosine graph, cosine of zero. Uh, last goofy one here is the limit as x approaches infinity. Obviously, you can see the problem there. My question to you is, who's larger? By definition, we've talked about, in Algebra 2 especially, a function that grows really, really, really fast. And hopefully, we all know that exponentials are a fast-growing function. So I'm going to say, obviously, x to the 10th is bigger than x squared. Um, I've got small over large which of course is zero, and I love zero because I don't have to check the signs. But maybe make a note to yourself that that exponential is our fastest growing function. Well, I know that was a lot to take in. I do want to stress that when we see the limit as x approaches infinity, you've got to be thinking power fight. And we've got to get those three rules down. Small over large is zero. Uh, large over small, that annoying one, is the does not exist, which is either the plus or minus infinity. And then same over same is the ratio of the coefficients. All right, so again, any questions, you know where to find us. Um, have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.